The U.S. Navy is just one branch of America's armed forces, but it is also one of the most important. Not only is it personally responsible for the maritime safety of America and its allies around the world, but it also has to facilitate the safe passage of valuable cargo ships through dangerous waters. And while you might assume that the power of the U.S. Navy is only used to protect against threats from the navies of hostile nations, there is another threat that it faces. One that has been a thorn in the side of seafarers and shipping companies for centuries. Pirates. No, not like Captain Jack Sparrow, Blackbeard, or any of their 16th century cousins. Those buccaneers haven't been an issue for anyone in hundreds of years. The pirates of the modern day aren't looking for buried treasure, and they certainly aren't threatening other sailors with sabers and muskets. These new age pirates use bazookas, machine guns, and grenades in battle, and they want either cold, hard cash or the valuable resources that U.S. Navy cargo ships and warships contain. Like the classic European pirates we know from history books and other media, modern pirates do what they do because they are impoverished, and piracy is a fast way to make a lot of money. Today's pirates also come from poor, unstable nations all around the world, but the vast majority of them, and the most well-known, come from the waters of Somalia, just off the Horn of Africa. So, what happens when Somali pirates attack U.S. Navy ships? Don't forget, these aren't rich, well-equipped sailors. Somali pirates use skiffs and small motorboats to get up close and personal with massive, multi-million dollar warships, and while they do have some firepower, it's nowhere near what the U.S. Navy has access to. Let's just say the results of these dangerous endeavors are usually unpleasant. When Somali pirates set out to approach their target, their goal is to board the ship, hold its crew captive, and hold out for ransom money that can sometimes be millions of dollars. If their demands for ransom money aren't met, their next bet is the cargo or equipment on the ship, which can usually be worth just as much but that's assuming everything goes to plan for them. Much more commonly, attempts made by Somali pirates will result in capture and legal trials, or even death depending on the type of ship they chose to attack. In the case of cargo ships, it's against maritime law for those vessels to be armed or battle-ready in any way. This would make them easy pickings, but non-lethal deterrents and various structural obstacles and fortifications make boarding these defenseless ships less of a cakewalk. Most U.S. Navy cargo ships are now equipped with water cannons, which shoot powerful, focused jets of highly pressurized water. While still non-lethal, these cannons can create an impenetrable sheet of water close to the boat, push invading vessels away, or even fill them up with water, making it difficult to maneuver. If those fail, the pirates would then have to deal with anti-boarding barriers that jut out from the ship at 90 degrees, reinforced entry points, and even razor wire. If they decide to use small arms fire on the cargo ship, they would be firing into a hardened hull that is impervious to everything except for missiles and other explosive projectiles. Needless to say, it would be an uphill battle. And that's just the unarmed cargo ships. When Somali pirates show aggression towards heavily armed warships, those instances play out much, much differently. 
While it doesn't make much sense for Somali pirates to attack U.S. Navy warships, an event that is akin to an ant trying to fight a rhino, it does happen. One such instance occurred on March 18, 2006, when the U.S. St. George and the U.S. Gonzalez were fired upon by pirates. The American ships being armed with guided missiles, machine guns, and well-armed crew members made quick work of the attackers. Of the two pirate skiffs, one was set on fire and sunk with its crew. That was enough to make the crew on the other skiff surrender, so they were spared in accordance with U.S. law and eventually released back to Somalia. While it's easy to think of Somali pirates as incompetent or pathetic for the attempts that they make, it's important to consider why they go to such lengths in the first place. As a coastal region with rich sea life, Somalia should have a thriving fishing industry that allows its citizens to live well and prosper. Unfortunately, Somalia as a country has lacked any kind of stable, organized government for many decades. Without measures or protections in place to protect its waters, other nations and fishing corporations have taken advantage of their resources to the point of overfishing. Now, generations later, people who should have access to an easy, simple life have been driven to commit desperate acts just to survive. 